Hey everybody, Tham141 here and what I'm going to do today is I'm going to attempt to make some Dutch oven bread. Um, there's a lot of different ideas out there online and I'm just going to make the rustic bread. Um, just the basics of flour, salt, uh, and yeast, and water. Um, and we're going to try to cook it in the Dutch oven um, on my wood stove. Don't know how this is going to work. So what come I've along got for the ride. Is I have one packet of yeast and one teaspoon of salt. I have some water and I have some 100% whole wheat flour. It's got some clumps in it. So I got three cups of this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it in the flour sifter most of it anyway and we're gonna try this oh my goodness I am NOT the normal cook in my house she is taking my mother shopping right now um, come on Whew. something tells me she might not be happy when she gets home <laughs> Oh, okay, all right. So, we have our flour all done out. Um, now I'm going to add my salt and my yeast. And I am going to mix that all up. Best way to randomly mix is to randomly mix. Or at least that's what I've always heard. Alright, now I'm also feeling for clumps in that flour because some of it didn't make it into the sifter. Some of it didn't make it into the bowl. Alright, now I'm going to add my warm water. Um, and I'm going to slowly mix it as I go. I'm not... Alright, let's just see. I'm going to slowly mix it as I go. I uh, probably should have used a spoon for this part. But like I said, I am not the normal cook of my family. My wife is. She's an extremely good cook. She cooks, so I don't have to. Thank God. Yeah, this is fun. I'm going to go ahead and I think i got enough here for most all of that. But there we go, she's starting. So this is going to be whole wheat bread, 100% whole wheat flour. And I am just going to continue to mix. I did... Full disclosure, work in a bakery when I was at the Bible is Word of Life Bible Institute. Um, and that was an experience. That was an awesome experience, actually. Um, other than waking up at 5 o'clock in the morning. Anybody that knows me will tell you Tracy is not a morning person. Now we're just mixing this up good now. pick it up because it's holding together pretty good. And it seems to be mixed fairly decent. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this into a nice neat ball. said I'm going to make it into a nice neat ball. Now take into consideration there is no camera manipulation. I'm only going to pause the camera. I'm not going to cut anything out. If this turns out, it'll turn out 
with us together, you'll see it. If it doesn't turn out, you'll see that too. All right. So now I'm gonna let I'm gonna set that in by the wood stove and let it rise for about an hour, um, and that will get the allow the yeast to go to work and make it. That's what we're looking at right there. All right. I will see you in about an hour, guys. Here is an update on the celery that I planted. If you remember back when uh, I posted a video, just a little, um, the bottom piece of a piece of store-bought celery, I planted it. There were, these were just sticking up just a little bit here, uh, and it's doing fantastic. I got a little bit wet. Now I'm going to let it dry. <laughs> I let it get a little too wet. Um, this is the onions. You can see right there. I got an onion starting to. Uh, grow out. I don't know what that is. Um, I got an onion starting to come out right there. Um, that's that long one that I pulled to show you. Um, there was another one, a bigger one. Where did it go? Oh well. Um, I also planted some uh, spinach in here but I don't think the spinach is doing very well. Here is another thing of fodder for our chickens and here is another set of fodder. It's been soaked and I just keep wetting it and I think you should be able to see it starting to sprout in there. The apple cider vinegar oh, reach down there right here um, after two weeks, we removed the apple pieces, and that is the liquid that was left over. And we have a couple more weeks to go on that. Uh, it started smelling like rotten apples, and I'm like, oh, no, this is great. Um, but uh, that smell is starting to turn a little vinegary. Uh, so hopefully that will work. i got to take it out every day, and, and I stir it to keep the mother in it and to keep it from going totally rancid I guess um, but that's another experiment that we're working on um, on the homestead um, so there you have it and this is what it looks like outside my southern window one of my southern windows here we are again I just took this out of the stove room it's been about an hour Okay, and this is what we got there. It's pretty close to doubled in size. I'm going to lay down some flour. I put down some uh, wax paper uh, or packaging paper, whatever you want to call it. Okay, got to get some flour on that hand. Because now I'm just going to roll this out of here. It's awful sticky and gooey. Awful gooey and light and fluffy. It reminds me of whipped, uh, oh what is that? The whipped um, yogurt. Kind of. Let's just take, get this out of the way right here quick. Alright, I'm using white flour for the thing. Now, I'm going to just, i got to stretch the gluten, or so they say. So I'm just going to knead this. My, uh, the guy I worked with in the uh, bakery at Word of Life, uh, Bible Institute, it was my, he, we used to just roll it and roll it and tuck it and tuck it and roll it and tuck it. And lather, rinse, repeat. Awful light dough, I really like that. Just keep adding a little bit of flour both to the paper 
into the, to the dough. Now, I greased the uh, Dutch oven with lard that we rendered. So this isn't like whole wheat, whole wheat, because I do have regular flour that I'm using. Now, let me grab my Dutch oven here. I don't know if you can see that. It's just a standard Dutch oven. And I greased it with the lard that we made. We've used this so some of it started to turn nice brown color. Okay, now I'm going to set this right in the middle of the pan. Alright, well, oop, keep it in the middle. Now, one of the instructions, let's say, to take a knife and cut the top to allow for expansion. Alright, now I'm going to let that rise for about an hour. And till it doubles in size. The way it's going, that shouldn't be long. All right, so I'm just gonna leave this sit and let it rise here in the hey everybody, oven. I'm back. Um, I've got the Dutch oven here, and I would say that has risen nice, nicely. Um, and now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take I'm going to grab a little bit of butter and wipe on that so it'll brown the top nice. Here. Now it's not going on Okay, there's a little butter on there. Okay. Now. This is all going to be a short time that we do this, but I have to, in order to ensure even heat, I'm going to take some hot coals. I shut all my smoke detectors off, and I'm going to put the hot coals. Hopefully I don't burn my house down here. All around the outside here. I set it around the outside here. And I'm gonna close that. Shut that down. I do not know what heat we're doing here. All I know is that I got hot coals going all around the top 
And I got the heat from the stove on the bottom. All right. Now we're gonna let that go for just a little while. Um, let's see, probably 20 minutes, 25 minutes. Um, and I'm gonna check it periodically because I don't want to burn it. Uh, I want this to be a successful test. Um, you notice we have three old irons. They're the old cast iron irons that you'd set on your wood stove and then you'd pull them out to iron them on here. That's to, they get hot and they put out more heat in the air. It just gives more hot air surface to radiate the heat. Uh, and we have a little old tea kettle with the whistler broke off that is just simply to uh, keep some humidity in lid here. off and to have a look. It's been about 13 minutes. And it's looking uh, still. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take and I'm going to replace a lot of this, these coals on the top um, with some hotter coals. Try to get that cooking from the top. I don't know how this is going to work. Never done this before. But we'll find out here she, she's starting to firm up still feels pretty doughy if she's starting to smell bread and that's a good thing uh, check back in another 31 minutes. minutes I just put a toothpick in it and it's still coming out with dough in several places so cool dough too hmm. um as you can see, it's a hundred and almost a hundred and ten degrees in this room right now. I think that's got to do with having the uh, coals out. <laughs> Go figure. Um, but yeah, it's uh, we're gonna keep checking her about every five or six minutes, and we'll let you know when we get there. Hopefully, the bottom's not burning to the cinder. Her hand. Let's just check this out here. Oh. Oh, that smell. It smells so good. She's not sticking. That's good. That means the seasoning of the pan worked and the lard worked. We'll just... Try to leave her on hey, there. It has been an hour now. Wendy's home now. You want to film this for me? Just We are going to... Pull that off. I smell no burning. Right in the middle. Nice crust. Clean toothpick. I'd say we're done. Yeah. I'll try the other side of the toothpick. Yeah, there's nothing on that. And I think I can just... Try that. We'll take this and stick it back on there. That's what she looks like right there, guys. Hey, that's not hot at all. It's a little unconventional. Now, should I let it cool a little bit? Now, that is just a basic. It's three cups of flour, salt, and yeast, and water. So, you know, that's a basic survival cake. Alright, um, grab a knife. I'm going to cut it. I got to cut it. Whole wheat bread. And there's no burning on the bottom. Show that there's no. Hmm. Okay. Well, we'll try that. DM 141. I'm out.